Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So I have a little bit of different kind of episode for you today. I'm going to try to do a history of the Fender molded hard case from around the mid 60s all the way up into the 2000s. And I don't have an example of every one of these cases, but I'll be able to fill in the blanks with some pictures. So I've been doing quite a bit of research on these lately, and there are some gaps that I've not been able to fill in. So if you have any info I've missed, please place it in the comments below, and that'll help everybody who's looking for the history of these cases. Let's get started. Well, if like me, you're Generation X or younger, you're probably looking at this case and thinking, wait, Fender cases haven't always been like this? And what did you say in the title about there being cases made in the 1960s? Well, it's true. There were Fender molded plastic hard cases made back in the 1960s, at least for a brief period, and they're known as the Bullwin case, or the eyeglasses or sunglasses case. Fender literature from the 1960s says that the molded cases are vacuum formed of high impact styrene. They are rust colored with gold anodized aluminum stripping, brushed brass hardware, and have the gold Fender signature on each side. Interiors are plush lined and semi French fitted with two compartments for storage. You know, I think semi French fitted is a phrase that's just lost to time. I'm not sure what that means. At any rate, I've been able to locate two different versions of this case. The first one is more trapezoidal in shape with a shorter latch edge than the hinge edge and it has three latches on the front. The second version is a little bit more rectangular and it has two latches on the front and two latches on the sides. Each one has a different style of interior as well. The interior on one is very open and does not have a form fitted area around the headstock and the interior of the other has a form fitted area around the headstock and the doors open in opposite directions. They seem to be available in multiple interior colors as well. I've seen several posts online that indicate that these early cases are mostly for Jaguars and Jazzmasters, you know, generally offset body guitars, but I've seen some Telecasters and Strats in them as well. So the 60s were cool, but 79 and into the 80s is when Fender cases really hit their stride in terms of the molded rectangular cases. There's three generations that we'll talk about today, so let's get started with that. The original first generation molded plastic rectangular hard case from Fender, technically called a flight case, was available from 1979 to roughly 1981. It was introduced as part of the 25th anniversary Stratocaster promotion, and a little-known company called SKB from Anaheim, California signed on to produce the first 2,500 cases for the 25th anniversary Strat. The case was available on other models until roughly 1981. Some specific features of the Generation 1 case include two black plastic halves with a large Fender USA stamping, square indentations on the top side at the corners, aluminum trim between the halves, three hinges, four horseshoe latches with one locking, metal feet, a covered accessory cavity inside beside the neck, and velour plush material. The velour was available in multiple colors, definitely black and red. I've seen some indications of some colors that look orange to me, but I think those are mostly due to fading. And while there may have been a brown interior on that Generation 1 case, that's the most colorful these cases ever got. This case is a Generation 2, and from here on out through the video, you'll notice that all these cases are black on black. So before I start talking about this Generation 2, let me talk about the generations and the overlap. So there's always, in every generation of Fender case, some time between when an older generation was still available and the newer generation has already come out. So you'll notice a couple of years overlap just about every time we talk about this. Now this Generation 2 was available from roughly 1980 to roughly 1990. But just remember what I said about those years. 1990 can turn into 1992, you know, if uh, there's dealer stock left over. So what are the differences between this case and the Generation 1? Well, there's several here on the exterior that are worth noting. For one thing, and I'll need to show you a still picture of this, there are only three latches on the front of this case instead of four. On the Generation 1, there's a latch on both sides of the handle, and on the Generation 2, there's a latch only in the center of the case next to the handle. Also, they made some changes to the exterior here. The logo is about the same size, but you'll notice that the USA is now in a square box or rectangular box, 
and the registered trademark logo is a raised R in an indented circle instead of the other way around with a raised circle and an indented R. The other thing is those little pockets on the corners of the case where the feet of another case would fit if you were to stack them, those are now gone. These stack pretty well even without those so I can understand why they eliminated them for the simplicity of the mold. Similar to the Generation 1, we've got metal feet, we've got two plastic halves, we've got a aluminum trim that runs around the whole perimeter of the top, and we've got a logo that's actually on both sides of this case. There are some differences in the latches themselves. These latches are sort of a stamped steel material, and you'll notice that my latches are in a rectangular shape. There's actually a second version of this latch that's more of a horseshoe shape, and it's really more like the Generation 1 latch, but I really don't know which one came first. On the inside, you're going to find that all of the fender cases have these cloth straps to keep the lid from falling open when you open the case. This particular case is different than the Generation 1 in that it has a very deep plush. Uh, it's like almost a long hair version of the velour that's in the Generation 1 case. And you'll see this kind of plush in a lot of different cases that come after this. Also, the cavity that's on the side of the case for accessories still extends the entire length of the neck, but it no longer has a cover over the top of it. There is a matching impression or a raised area on the top side of this case that sort of fits into that to keep your accessories from bouncing out and touching the guitar. All of these cases fit both right and left-handed instruments, and they fit both Stratocasters and Telecasters. You can see the patterns in the Styrofoam are symmetrical. In terms of common complaints that I see about these cases, because of the long flat surfaces with very little support, they do tend to warp quite a bit. You can sometimes straighten out some of the warps by adjusting this aluminum trim that's on the side, kind of tweaking it. Some other weak points on the Generation 2 are the feet and the hinges. The hinges themselves are only attached to the trim and the feet tend to break off because they get pushed up into the brittle plastic above. Another complaint that people say is common on these cases is that the styrofoam glue comes loose from the exterior of the case and the styrofoam itself comes loose and is easy to lift out like that. In terms of the cases that you're going to find from the 80s, this case, the Generation 2, is by far the most common because it had the longest run. So the third generation of the Fender molded case is the one I know the least about. It was available, as far as I can tell, from the late 80s until possibly the early 90s. Some listings online have called this the Elite Case, and I've also heard it referred to as the Deep Case. I've been calling it the Plateau Case because the side resembles sort of a mound with a flat top instead of being a recessed side like the previous two models. It seems like with this version that Fender or SKB decided that stacking cases was really not that important to most players, so they eliminated the stacking functions. This version has the same logo and stamping as the Generation 2, but it only has it on one side of the case, only on the top. Right away you'll be able to notice an immediate improvement in the hinges. The hinges have rivets that go through the sides of the case so that they don't only attach to the trim. Another hardware change includes the latches. The latches have a twist or cam lock style connection, and there actually is no lock on this case. There's only a place for you to place your own padlock if you like. On the inside of the case, the changes are a bit more subtle. It still has the same fuzzy black plush interior, but it has a smaller uncovered interior cavity, about half the size of the second gen. And while this isn't necessarily a history of Squire cases, I'll note that this generation of case also came with a Squire logo, but the interesting note is that this one had the older hinges and the horseshoe latches. So before we leave the subject of the Fender rectangular molded cases altogether, let me just tell you, I'm only covering the guitar cases. There are base versions of most of these cases, and you can look those up if you're interested. Now there's one more set of rectangular cases that I think deserve some honorable mentions, and so let's cover those now. During the time that Fender was producing the Lead 1 and Lead 2 models, they produced this blow-molded plastic case. It's completely plastic, from the latches to the hinges. It's got a really long piano hinge all along the back edge, and when you open it up, there's very minimal padding on the inside. That makes it one of the least desirable cases, and it explains why it's probably the most rare. The case lasted from around 1979 to probably 1982, 
And just so you know, it will not fit a standard guitar like a Stratocaster or a Telecaster. Now that blow molded rectangular case certainly didn't seem like an SKB model, but this next one certainly does. It very much resembles a mixture of the Gen 1 and Gen 2 rectangular molded cases, but it's designed to fit smaller guitars like the Lead and the Bullet. When you look at this case, you'll notice that the logo is the style of a Gen 2 case, but there are recessed squares at the corners similar to the Gen 1 case. Also, there are only three latches, and they're the rectangular style of stamped steel latch that I showed you on my Gen 2. Also, it can be a little bit difficult to see, but the long panels on the sides of these cases are not recessed in compared to the border around the edge. They're actually on the same plane. Inside the case, despite being generally smaller, it really resembles the Gen 2 almost exactly. I've not measured one of these cases with a tape measure, but I know they're dimensionally smaller on the exterior than the Generation 2 case or the Generation 1 case, so they should be easily distinguishable at a swap meet. One last distinguishing feature of this case is that there is no lock on the center latch, and that should really help you when you're trying to ID one of these. Just for good measure, I'll note that there are two additional rectangular molded cases that I've seen in my research, and they're both Squire branded. The first one has a brass nameplate with rivets, and the second one has a more of a domed badge that's placed into a recess on the top of the case. I believe these were available from the late 1990s into the mid 2010s, and I don't know which one's older. So that brief diversion aside, the rectangular case series takes us up into the 1990s. So let's start out with the 1990s cases, the shaped fender cases. So this is the first generation of the shaped cases, which is the official name from SKB. There are actually three that I'm going to group these under. But this particular generation is available from 1991 to 1997, possibly as late as 99, just depending on what guitar you see these with listed online. But I refer to them as the silhouette cases sometimes because there's a silhouette of a Stratocaster here on the very top and it's raised up. There's also a recessed area where there's normally a badge and the regular Fender cases had a red badge here and the Plus cases had a silver badge here. So you'll a lot of times hear these cases referred to as the red badge cases. Like most Fender cases, it's got two black plastic halves. It's got aluminum trim running down the middle. These cases have four latches, one on each side of the handle, one on each end, and also three hinges. And you'll notice that they've carried over the improved style hinges with the rivets from the earlier generations of the case. Inside the case, they've used the same fuzzy black material that they've used in all the earlier generation cases. And again, it's symmetrical, so you can fit right and left-handed instruments in here, as well as strats and telecasters. The neck pocket area is a little bit smaller than in the other cases, just because of the shape design, but there is a storage compartment that's uh, in the middle and it's hinged. So the bottom of the case has no real identifying marks or logos. It's got kind of a Tolex or sort of a veiny kind of texture to it, uh, which is a little bit different from the earlier cases. Otherwise, it just has a border around the whole edge. It's got some sort of semi-rectangular feet that are meant for you to, you know, rest on when, you're, when it's laying on, the, on its side on the floor. And uh, in terms of the other hardware, it has these domed metal knobs for feet. So here's the actual red label that should have been on my case when it was new. And here's another example of a silver Fender Plus logo that goes on the Fender Plus cases. If you're lucky enough to get one of these Fender Plus cases, they have upgraded latches, as you'll see here in this photo. And actually, I think all four of these latches have a locking mechanism. So the second iteration of the Fender-shaped case was available from around 1998 to 2003. The most identifying feature of this case is that it still retains the silhouette of the Strat, but it no longer has a space for a badge here. Instead, it's got a molded Fender logo that's actually molded into the case. There are a couple other differences. There's actually two versions of this stamped silhouette case. One of them has this ridge that runs along the bottom side. It has similar plastic feet instead of metal feet, and it's got that's another small ridge or right in the waist area. A second version of the stamp silhouette case has metal feet instead of the plastic feet, and it doesn't have any of the ribbing around the bottom edge or the waist area of the guitar on the sides. 
And just to be exceedingly picky in this comparison, the first iteration of this case had a handle similar to every other case before it, and another version has a smooth handle. Everything else is more or less identical. If you open these cases up, you can tell the styrofoam and the lining, everything inside is exactly the same as the first gen. So the third generation of the shape case was available from approximately 2002 to 2008. It's nearly identical to the silhouette case and the very last version, except it has no silhouette. It's so rounded that I sometimes call this the cloud case. All it has on the top is a Fender logo that's embossed and there are no other markings. Other than that, the bottom is identical, the interior is identical, the handle is the updated handle on the last version, and it's really just a continuation of the last iteration, even has the metal feet. If you're a big fan of the shaped silhouette case, SKB actually still sells it. They've updated the latches and the handle and the feet and most of the ribbing on the outsides, but it still retains the familiar Strat silhouette on the top of the case, at least except for the treble clef on the headstock. So some people really like the style of the shaped case, but I gotta tell you, I'm super happy that the rectangle is back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the newest style flight cases are the most durable by far and these latches and handles that are on these things are vastly improved. I brought you all the way up through 2008 so let me show you where these begin. We're not going to finish with these today. I'll leave that history for someone else to write and these things are still being manufactured but maybe one day we'll return to that and do a history of these modern style cases. I can at least show you the first one, and then we'll wrap up here today. So in 2008, SKB reintroduced the rectangle back into the Fender lineup. This is a molded flight case, and I call it the ribbed rectangle because it has the three ribs running down the side that actually contribute to the stacking function. There are matching feet on the other side of the case that fit into the indentations on the ribs. Note the large latches that are TSA approved and the handle that's much bigger and much, much better to hold. The interior is nice also, and it has the same black felt that we're all used to. Although I will say, later versions of this case did come with a closed or a covered cavity for the accessories, and also I've seen several colors for the interior fabric. So this later version of the TSA case is actually one of my favorite cases and I'm not really going to go into the history on this because I promised you I wouldn't. I'm going to leave that for somebody else to do in the future and we're going to end the episode here today. I really appreciate you guys watching. I really appreciate you guys liking my videos. Don't forget to leave a comment, especially if you have an update that can help everyone else out who's looking for history on the older cases. And, you know, I appreciate when you guys subscribe to my channel. I hope you guys have a happy holidays. hope you guys have a happy new year. And I'll see you guys next time.